Hello, I'm Maddie. Did you know there are over 20,000 species of bee in the world? Here in the UK, we have about 250 of them. Most of these are solitary bees, which are bees that like to live by themselves. But there are so many types of solitary bee, they can look really different from each other. And they make their homes in all sorts of places out of lots of different things, like mud, wood, and even leaves. The next biggest group is the bumblebees. We have around 25 species of bumblebee here in the UK. And if I asked you to draw a bee, you'd probably draw a type of bumblebee. They are fuzzy, fluffy, and pretty cute looking. And they're also social insects, which means they usually live in groups with a couple of hundred other bee buddies. But finally, and last but not least, we have the honeybee. Talking of which, here's one right now. Here in the UK, we have just one type of honeybee, the European honeybee, or Apis mellifera. They have amber bodies with golden stripes, and they live in colonies of up to 50,000 bees. Nowadays, most honeybees are kept in beehives, just like these ones. But if we open a hive up, we'll find that not all honeybees are the same. Inside a colony, there are three different types, or castes, of bees. The queen bee, the worker bees and the drone bees. And that is who we are looking for today. But I'm not here alone. This is Chris from Black Bee Honey, who looks after these wonderful hives. And behind the camera, we've got Greg. Say hi, Greg. Hello. <laughs> All right, then, let's open one of these up. Oh, that's a lot of bees. What type of bees are these then? All right, so straight away, we are seeing worker bees. And they are by far uh, the biggest group that we have inside a hive. All of the worker bees are female. And you can tell by their name that uh, they do all of the work, pretty much. So all of the bees we're seeing here, they are worker bees. If I take one of these frames out, we'll be able to get um, a better look and we can see some of the jobs that a worker bee will do inside a hive. Get a hive tool. So I'm gonna start by taking one of these frames at the edge of this box out and I reckon in here we should see some honey stores if we're lucky here we are all right have we got much action going on here oh it's loose on the bottom not so much but actually at the moment the worker bees are probably just busy cleaning this frame up and that's one of the jobs that a worker bee does when she's really young she'll help to clean up the hive and uh, she'll also take any rubbish out and that includes any dead bees as well and should also help to look after the larvae those are the baby bees and if we go closer to the center of the box we should be able to see some nurse bees in action there well this is very busy this particular frame wow so i want to be super careful There we go, wow, all right. Gosh. So what we can see here is brood. And if you can see the little white wiggly bits at the base of the cells, those are larvae. So those are little uh, bee grubs, if you like. So they start out as eggs and then they turn into larvae. The worker bees will make sure they're nice and fed. And then when they're ready, they'll pupate. That's when they must like wrap a protective shell around themselves. And that is when they transform, when they turn themselves into bees, into, into bees like the ones we're seeing right here. But then when a worker bee gets a little bit older, when they are over 12 days old, that is when a worker bee starts to produce wax. And when a bee can produce wax, that's when they can help start to build the honeycomb, which is this amazing structure that we can see, which they then use to store all of their honey. And also that is where the brood are being raised. When a worker bee gets to over 18 days old, that is when a worker bee, a female bee, will develop their stinger. And when a honey bee has a stinger, that is when they go out into the wide world and they start to forage. They start to look for nectar and pollen. You said all of these are ladies? Yes. Uh, and there are the little ones in there? Yes. Are there any male bees? 
So male bees are called drones and you can tell them apart because they are larger, they have rounder bodies and they have big round eyes that touch in the middle. The male bees, the drones, they don't really do anything. They don't have stingers so they can't guard the hive. They don't go out and forage and to collect nectar or pollen um, and they don't do any cleaning either. They basically get looked after by all of the worker bees their only job is to go out and mate with a queen bee from another colony and that's about it but actually because we're quite late in the season we're filming this in September there isn't really any need for drone bees so we tend to find this time of year that the ladies kick them out of the hive as they prepare for winter I know so we won't see any drones here I'd be surprised if we see one this late in the year I'll keep looking for you though but at the moment I'm not seeing any lads. What about the queen then? So normally we will find one queen bee for every colony, but they can be quite tricky to find. So we're going to go and join Chris, who has already been looking in another hive. Thanks girls. Let's close you up. Chris has found the queen. Chris has found her. Oh, you've cheated. She's marked. So the queen's here. You can tell her apart, uh, apart from the fact she's been marked with a, with a white spot. She has a longer body. We call that part of her, of her body the abdomen. And often you'll notice that the other bees around her will sort of uh, have a look and make sure that she's okay. A queen's always marked with this dot then? No, we mark them to, so we can find them. Because if they try and swarm, you can, if you find the queen, you can prevent the swarm happening. But bees are very hygienic and sometimes they'll clean that spot off them mm -hmm. and you'll not be able to find her again. So sometimes I have to mark them two or three times a year just so I can locator. She's the only female bee in the hive that will lay eggs and at the height of the summer she can lay up to 2,000 eggs a day and it's those eggs that will become larvae that will then pupate and emerge as bees. The queen bee she emits she lets out something called pheromones which is a little bit like bee perfume and as long as all of the other bees in the hive are able to smell the queen bee then everything should work just about fine. If a, a, a hive gets too crowded or something happens to the queen bee and they can no longer smell her, that's when the bees start to get unhappy and you're at risk of the honeybees leaving the hive and swarming to go somewhere else. See, there's a wasp that's come in. There, yeah. Right, Ooh. so you'll notice that another job of the worker bees is to attack the wasps, see? Oh yeah. See? Oh yeah. So that is the worker being a good guard bee and getting rid of that wasp that's trying to nick some of their honey. Oh, it's being successful right now. I know, cheeky, but that is because we've got the frame out of the hive. So that's it. That's definitely not the bee's fault. So we have seen lots and lots of worker bees. We've got some amazing shots of a queen bee, but we haven't seen any drones simply because there aren't many about this time of year. I want to say a massive thank you to Chris at Black Bee Honey for letting us look inside his hives, to Greg for filming, and also for any grown-ups watching, um, I've actually been filming another video today with Matt Parker from Stand Up Maths, all about the shape of honeycomb cells, which is particularly interesting. Hope you've enjoyed the video. Thank you so much. Subscribe for more beekeeping videos. As always, stay curious, and I'll see you very soon. Bye from me and the bees.